Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games as we continue to fight this Brontosaurus, which is so much fun. Look at that, so much fun. Off to a great start. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Games are fun. And it's only gonna get harder from here. Games are all about fun, guys. Love fun. All right, I should actually pay attention to his pattern this time. Yeah, so he just, yeah. Uh, so basically uh, the design of this guy is that you're supposed to wait for him to stun himself. You get about three, maybe four hits if you're you're lucky, and uh, then repeat the cycle. Right. And that's pretty traditional, I think, with a lot of games like this. Um, it's just, it requires a lot of waiting yeah. and cycles. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the standard boss battle for these types of games, though, you know? That's true. I mean, what do you what do you think about that? Like, I, I, <laughs> I don't think anything he's doing is entirely out of the realm of... I, yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think it's bad. I just wonder if he could have done more. It's the first boss battle, though, you know? I, if he had done more, it would have felt like the hmm. difficulty would have just skyrocketed, you know? Uh, Especially I, well, okay. in games like this, something to really hold on to in that first couple levels is your jump height, how quickly you jump, how far you jump, um, how your how far your double jump goes. Does it not go far enough, or as far it, as the first jump? I think in better words, it's it's just a matter of like getting a feel for the game. Exactly, and then the boss battle for something like this should should still be in that same vein. Yeah. You know, everything up until this point has been, like, pretty minor in terms of the difficulty curve. So it has the benefit of familiarity. Exactly. Okay, I, I agree with you there. Um, maybe more wasn't the right term either. Maybe it was just different. Um, but I, the point, I guess, still stands that you made. I think the famili familiarity... It's a tough word, I know. It, you know, I stumble on my words. I know. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, Chris. But yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think most people that are playing this game whoop, probably oh. like it for its oh. its retro tropes. <sighs> Re retro tropes. Retro tropes. I wonder if I could stay in this doorway. I well, like that the caveman has red hair. Does he? Uh, yeah. Well, like, he's got orange, orangish hair and facial hair. Well. Um, because if you compare it to the colors in the background, it, it, it's a lot warmer. Oh, okay, yeah. I think he stands out very well on that end, definitely. Yeah. Um, and even I can kind of see that. And even, like, the parts that aren't blue or purple or whatever it is um, are green, I think. Yeah. So. And I noticed that a lot with some of the enemies, too. Some of them, not all of them. Other enemies will have, like, one like accented color that's a, a warmer shade reminding you that, hey, Ooh. something's here. I think um, that's important, and and I think the best part too is that it doesn't feel out of place, and maybe right. that that's, goes hand in hand with the style since it's all pixelated. I do really like the art for this game. Um, oh, you could I, just do that. Yeah, I thought <laughs> that I wasn't tall enough for that. That's cool. Um, I do really like the art for this game. It doesn't feel too cluttered or unnecessary. No, it actually it's is polished. a really good homage to like those game those these kinds of games that we played as a kid on like this the Nintendo or Super Nintendo. You know in a, in a weird way I do feel like it actually has more level of detail though than a lot of retro. It does. Yeah. Platformers. Do. Absolutely. But it still has that simplicity that is uh I'm quite fond of in these types of games. Wow. Yeah, how did I can you just stay that? over here. There you go. How did you hit him hitting him in the face cause fountains of blood to Go have it. What are you doing? <laughs> it's like it's like a Final Fantasy VII squat. What's happening? <laughs> okay, so oh. we we were at the oh, this is like a Ghouls and Goblins esque. Yeah, kind of. Okay, so we we're or at the Ghouls case. and Ghosts. Ghouls and what are... yeah, that one. Like, comment, and subscribe if you know the name of that one. Great call to action. Your call to actions are terrible, Kuj. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the joke. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, That's now, it. We, uh, oh, now we, we have some... air combat. What's more, yeah, air combat, and the the part that we had got a Ooh. little... Ooh. Oh, oh, I didn't realize oh, it even took... oh, 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 oh. Wait, did I start Chris, with two hearts? Chris, I know that I was excited to play this one, but I'm, I'm, really, I'm really glad that you're the one doing this, because this level alone <laughs> would absolutely... <laughs> I would be pushed over the- I would be pushed to the limit. Oh, okay, these motherfuckers. I know I just- Now, I wasn't gonna this, I have a problem with. Yeah, I couldn't see that. 
And maybe, maybe I that couldn't wasn't, even see that. Yeah. That's not even because you're colorblind. Maybe that was intentional, but if that was, then that's that's actually bad design. Um, yeah. You so, want you want your enemies to, while fitting with the theme of the level, still have enough recognizability that you could see them behind and and be able to tell that they're not part of the background. I think the intention of that enemy was actually to kind of camouflage it. Um, yeah, but, as part of the challenge. The issue with that is that it just doesn't feel fair to the player. Mostly because you had uh, uh, the the little background piece you hadn't really interacted with before. Mm -hmm. It was also in a position that I couldn't see it until I had already landed. Until it was too late. Until it was too late, yeah. No. Wait, how do you... Oh, is that plant uh, bouncy? Um, maybe... Do I... Can I... Because there's no, like, wall jump that has been discovered. What? Oh, no, that was your dash. Um... um... There's gotta be something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm stupid. I just picked up the new item. Oh! Yeah, kind of cool. I always loved these kinds of things in, uh, in games like this. The one thing I the think... The ones that make the platforms. Like, yeah. Really cool. I, I think that's really cool, too. It's probably my favorite of the, the tools in this game. Um, I think the one thing that they were missing at that particular spot is they needed an infinitely spawning oh, yeah. section of those because... Oh, I had one heart. Well. Just um, so you know, you had one heart. <laughs> Found that out. <laughs> yeah, I, I think level design wise, they needed an infinitely spawning section of those uh, simply so that the player can kind of figure that out. Because what if I had. I know they gave me six, so they still gave me a decent amount to play around with to figure out the fact that those were my bridge up there. But then again, if you're. If, if somebody's playing through this game for a second or third time, I. You know, there are people out there who do this, speedrunners and such. Um, they're going to know that there is an infinite loop of those things, and they will just stockpile them. You know, they know exactly what to do with them, but there's okay. no there's no sense of urgency, and I need to be very careful with how I use this. That's that's actually a good point. If there, I don't know what the capacity for these things are, but I guess that would be a way to kind of break the game. Yeah, because then nothing mm. you... Nothing would be uh, unattainable. Now everything would be in your grasp. Yeah. Okay. So then, that's a good question. How would you resolve that? Do you think I... that giving them like a quantity of six is enough to? I mean, obviously, six is more than enough. It, it worked for us. Um... You have one heart. Uh... Just because you forgot before, I'm reminding you. Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Do you think that's good enough? Do you think there's a better solution design -wise? I honestly would almost give them less. Because mm. it, the... Well, maybe not... Okay, maybe not like... Maybe like five. I think six is the bare minimum you need okay. in that moment. I think they do it in groups of threes too, so giving them five kind of would be weird. I bet you the way they did it um, was they just like had two... I think every time you pick them up, you get three. So I oh, think okay. they just had two like right next to each other. Oh, okay. All right, that makes sense. We're like on top of. Each other. Uh, I anyway. would, I would keep it as it is. I wouldn't change it, mostly for that reason that you know you don't want to break the game. So then the, this early on. Then the next question is, as a player, say you didn't realize that they, um, whoop, well, missed opportunity. Uh, as a player, say. That's not necessarily meaning you can't get it. Get it. Oh, uh, you just have to sacrifice some health to do go back. There we go. So as a player, say you didn't realize it right away. Right. Right. And you you just screwed up and lost because you used up all of your spiky spiky things. harpoon things. Uh, spears. Right. Um, and so you couldn't advance. You had to kill yourself so that you could continue. Would you feel that the game kind of gypped you? No. You don't think so? I would have felt that, like, okay, now I understand. Yeah, it kind of sucks that I have to go back through this stuff. But at the end of the day, the game is brutal. I keep using the term brutal. I really need to work brutal. on that. Brutal. It's difficult enough that there are going to be times where you have to go back through anyway. You know? Um, and while that can be frustrating, I think that's just sort of the nature of the game. I would have just felt like, oh, man, I really should have just paid attention to what I picked up and, and tried to throw it, you know? I will and give see you what, a... what would have happened. Plus, yeah. in the area that they gave it to you in, there were no enemies immediately next to you. That's true. Um, it was a safe it zone. It was just it was a safe zone. You had literally nowhere else to go. So, jumping, you can't climb walls because that was never covered. 
Mm -hmm. You can't... There's no other place to go backwards. Mm -hmm. The only place to go is up. Well, I don't know what other buttons I could push. Why don't I just randomly hit the, the item button? Oh, it's stuck into the wall. I got it. I figured out how it goes. I think the way that they introduce the concept for the spear is actually really smart and intuitive in this way. Well, that didn't work. It fits with how the game has played so far. Okay, I, I, I agree. Similar to the, the platform below. You know, it was a safe zone with no hints or no blatant like, hey, this is where you need to go moments. Uh, you kind of had to take the second and figure it out for yourself. What is happening? There's a health thing right down there. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, okay, okay you did go. it. Woo! You get it. You did it, Chris. Although I lost my spears because of that. Oh. Well, oh. Ow. Yay! <laughs> Progress! <laughs> I think... I, I don't remember how many zones there are, how many, um... What would you call it? Like, levels. Yeah, levels, I guess, would just be the right term for it. I don't know how many levels there are before we hit that shop guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, what is that? I don't know. You know what? He seems we'll... kind of stuck, though, so I'm gonna... just going to go. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, there he is. Now that we've made it to the shop, that's all for this episode. All right. Um, question of the day. Do you think that the introduction of the spear mechanic was done in, a, in, in an intuitive way? Do you feel that it could have been done a little bit better? Or yeah, and, think... and, and well, especially if you do think it could have been done better, how would you have done it? There you go. In a way that doesn't break the game. Um, cool. Well, thank you for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Your damn poop noise. Yep. <laughs>